My artist presentation is on pianist and vocalist Shirley Horn. I did a lot of digging into Shirley's life and legacy this semester, both in my lessons with Professor Wedding and in my jazz pedagogy class with Dr. Bergeron, in which I prepared a jazz history lecture on her life. Shirley is best known for her flawless independence as a pianist and vocalist, and as the empress of ballads at extremely slow tempos, although she could really swing. She had a very minimalistic approach to delivering a lyric, placing the story at front and center in terms of importance. She had a deep sense of devotion and commitment in all aspects of her life, personally and professionally, which is a big reason why she's such a source of inspiration for me. She was born in DC in 1934. She started as a classical pianist and got into jazz music in her teen years. Her first big influence she cites is Errol Garner. She was awarded a spot at Juilliard, but due to family finances, she could not attend and opted to attend Howard University instead. She released her debut record in 1961, which attracted the attention of Miles Davis and he invited her to open for him at the Village Vanguard. This was really life altering for Shirley and she met some of her idols while she was performing at the Vanguard. Um, she cites Miles as a huge influence on her life, personally as well as musically. And in an interview she once said, we both felt the same about the use of silence. We got that from each other. And that is a great summation of their relationship. Um, she recorded a few more albums after that, a couple for Mercury under the guise of Quincy Jones, but she was taken out of her normal setting of accompanying herself, which she didn't like. She referred to herself as her own best accompanist. And she was also put in a box in some respects in terms of trying to sing more popular music, more Beatles songs at the time. And that just wasn't what she wanted to do. She wasn't really interested in a spotlight. And right around this time, her daughter was born. So she took a step back from trying to pursue performing professionally to be home to raise her child. She did not quit music completely at this time. She did perform locally, but for the most part, she felt it was extremely important that she was home during the day with her child. It wasn't until the late 1970s that she started to gain some more attention and pick up the pace some more. She recorded a few albums for Steeplechase, and it was around this period where she met Steve Williams and Charles Abels, who must be talked about in any conversation about Shirley Horn. They were essential to her sound, and they would be her trio for decades to come until pretty much the end of her career. Um, they described each other as soulmates musically. They didn't need to have much conversation when it came to what was important and what would serve the music. She ended up signing with Verve. She released 11 albums with Verve. This was the bulk of her career and her work, her most recognized work was with Verve. She started performing and touring more all over the world and she gained an international audience at that time. She collaborated with many musicians, including Benny Carter, Carmen McRae, Joe Williams, Clark Terry, and the list goes on. And for me, Shirley is touching because of her authenticity as a human and as an artist. When you watch a video of her performing, she doesn't really talk much, but it's not uncomfortable. It's so endearing and she really draws you in. She has this amazing ability to change the mood and the attitude of a room and just fill the space with her artistry and have you hanging on the edge of your seat just waiting to hear what she's gonna do next. And the story of the song is so important to her and I've cried multiple times listening to Shirley sing and play and it is, truly the epitome of being a vessel for music, a selfless vessel. Um, and so I'm gonna share with you my rendition of what became her signature song. Um, later in her life, she recorded 
multiple albums orchestrated by Johnny Mandel. This was a 180 from earlier in her career when she sang in front of a large ensemble. She really enjoyed this process and she said, I didn't feel restricted at all because Johnny Mandel is such a genius and a wonderful writer. And so this song, Here's to Life, became a signature song of hers and kind of captured in a way her own career as someone whose career blossomed towards the end of her life. So what I worked on in my lesson was a way to make this song my own and not and not re just redo what Shirley did in that exact arrangement and stay true to the song as well. So this is my version of Here's to Life. No complaints and no regrets. I still believe in chasing dreams and placing bets. But I have learned that all you give is all you get. So give it all you've got. I had my share. I drank my fill And even though I'm satisfied I'm hungry still To see what's down another road Behind the hill And do it all again Here's to life And every joy it brings Here's to life To dreamers and their dreams Funny how the time just flies how love can go from warm hellos to sad goodbyes And leave you with the memories you memorize To keep your winters warm For there's no yes in yesterday and who knows what tomorrow brings or takes away as long as I'm still in the game I want to play for laughs for life for love so here's to life And every joy it brings Here's to life To dreamers and their dreams May all your stories Here's to love. Here's to love. Here's to.